Welcome to Autodesk Simulation TV. In this simulation in action, we're going to be looking at natural convection, or passive cooling of our parts while hot air rises. My name is James Herzing. So for this problem, we're going to be looking at a chipboard where we're going to have heating on the different parts and see how, with ambient temperature, we can force the air to move and cool our part. Our key learning objectives are how to import a model from Inventor Fusion, how to define fluid and solid parts in CFD, how to apply boundary conditions to our different parts for both our fluid and solid parts, and how to interpret the results for temperature and fluid velocities. Let's move into the software and see how we're going to do this. So we're starting out in Inventor Fusion. The goal of this exercise is to take this model and instead of forcing air through or around it to cool it down, we're just going to create fluid volumes and let natural convection do the cooling for us. So something that we're going to notice is that we have no air in the center here. This is going to be created automatically in this cavity when it's sent over to simulation CFD. Now to do that, we can just go up to the top of the ribbon here and click on the simulation CFD button and it's automatically going to send the model over to that software. So you can see it pop up here, and when we click OK on this screen, into Simulation CFD we go, and you're going to see that the parts that were in Fusion automatically are sent over, plus the internal fluid volume. If we middle mouse click, we can hide some of these parts and hide some of the detail, showing what parts are in here. If we middle mouse click again, we can then see all of the chips and the board as well. So one thing that we don't have in this model, which we're going to need, is an external fluid volume. So we're going to have to create a fluid around all of these parts for our air to rise. So to do this, we're going to go up, right click, and choose Edit. And then we're going to choose the last tab for external. And when we do that, we're going to see a box form all around this part. So right now, this transparent box represents the air that's going to be around our part. If we don't like the size that it is by default, we can click on any of these handles and click, it, click and drag it to any size that we're interested in. Alternately, if we happen to know the size of the box that we want, we can come up here to the table and type in values and define them to be whatever we want. Since we made this model, I happen to know just what size I want this air fluid to be, so I can just type numbers in and create the size that I want it. One thing of note is that you want to make sure that this air is large enough so that it covers all of these parts, as well as is long enough so that we can get a fully developed velocity profile for our air moving around this part. So with these values typed in here, we can create the fluid volume, and we're going to see it shows up as an additional part on our screen. All right, you can see it's another part. It can be hidden and displayed just like any other part that was brought in from CAD. So the next thing we have to do here is define materials for all of these parts. Uh, right now, they're just set to a default value, but we have various items going on here. Some of our parts are fluid, like air. Some are solid, such as aluminum and silicone. So we're going to hide some of these parts select them, and we can go up and click on the Edit button. When we click on Edit, you can see there's all sorts of options here. You can see this is already set to Fluid, and since it is Air, we're just going to change its name to Air. And here's a key. Next to Environment, we have to click on Set, and we're now going to change this Air so that it's not acting the same at all times, but now it's variable depending on the temperature that the Air is at. So you can see these radio buttons here at the top. We're going to make sure to click from there over to variable and click OK. So now our air is going to have different properties based on temperature. If we hide that, we can now come in and repeat the editing process again for all of these parts. So you can see we're changing our type to solid and choosing material for the different parts. With all of these selected again, we'll press edit, change it to solid, and define silicone for these parts. Pretty simple. Lastly, we're going to edit one more time, change from fluid to solid, and make an aluminum part. And click OK. All right, so now we have our materials defined for this. Moving left to right on the ribbon, we're going to choose boundary conditions and now apply some boundary conditions to our model. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is select the top and bottom surface of our external air and apply a pressure to this. So we change our type to pressure and leave it at a gauge pressure of zero. Click OK. And then we're going to apply a temperature value here on this bottom surface. So we're going to put a temperature value of 20 degrees C on here so that we're saying this is our ambient temperature. And after we do that, we're going to apply heat generation on these internal parts, and this is going to cause our air to heat up and move past uh, the microchips. So hiding some of these parts, we're going to choose three of these chips, as you can see highlighted, edit, and put a heat generation of 0.5 watts on each of those, and click apply. Next, we're going to choose this one, do the same thing, but this time apply a 2 watt heat generation. You can see on all of these, they now have a little line representing that a boundary condition has been de defined. And over here, there's a legend for what color line represents what kind of boundary condition. OK, so now with our materials and boundary conditions defined, we're going to take a quick preview of what our mesh is going to look like. When we do this, we see that all sorts of dots appear here on our model, which is representing where nodes are going to be. So it gives us an idea of how many elements are going to exist in this analysis. So we don't want to mesh it so that there's so many elements that it takes a very long time to analyze, but we want enough elements to make sure that we capture all of the velocity and uh, temperature changes throughout the problem. If we click on Solve, we can now click on the Physics tab to just make this slightly more complicated and uh, provide more detail, detail in our analysis. If we click on heat transfer, we can now make sure that our problem takes into account both the fluid velocities as well as the thermal changes. That being said, we need to make sure that we have gravity defined. We're going to define this as our bottom surface and know that hot air rises, so from here our velocity in the air is going to increase. So it's going to move past the part faster after it heats up and help cool our parts down. So we change our gravity from 000 to 001 and click Solve. When we do that, we can see everything happening here telling us that our part's meshing successfully, that our loads are being applied, so on and so forth. After that's all done, we can see every iteration of this analysis starts to display our results. So we can look at any, any result type that we want right now, our velocities, our temperatures, whatever is important to us in this analysis. And with each step, it updates our results visually. We can go ahead and add a plane here and slice through to get a more detailed view of what's going on. So if we zoom this around, we can see the changing of the air and the parts over time. All right, jumping ahead, we can see that we now have a fully formed velocity profile past the parts of interest where our heat is being generated. So here we can go ahead and change our unit systems to whatever we want so that we're looking and seeing that this is about 7 inch per second velocity moving. Now, what other results can we look at? Well, of course, anything having to do with velocity, but also, since this was a thermal analysis as well, we can see the temperatures on all of these parts also. So we can go ahead and right-click and change from velocity magnitude to temperature. As we do that, we can now see that, of course, the maximum temperature is right where we would expect it, where our parts were generating heat. But as the air is moved past, you can see that some of the air has heated up because of passing through this hot area. We can also go ahead and click on global and change this so that some of our parts show a temperature such as the microchips and we can then change our plane to show the velocity because we're interested in how, this, how fast this air is moving yet we want to make sure that the temperature of these parts is still at a reasonable level. So now you can see we have parts displayed with temperatures, and if we get our plane back up there, we're going to show the velocity as well. So here we have it. You can see one solid color representing the temperature of that part, and then we can see the velocity going past it increasing due to the temperature of those parts. We want to avoid critical temperatures for all of these parts, so we're going to change our legend to show right here one part having a temperature and see how it affects the rest. 
That's all there is for natural convection. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.